Hi, I'm Shane Miller, AKA GP Llama. In today's Strava Insights, what we're looking at is something that's been asked quite a lot. What does it take to compete at Kona, the Ironman World Championships? Well, we can answer that today. If you've seen the data on the bike count, you've seen what the equipment people are actually using, so what they have. What about what they do? what they go through. Well, let's have a deep dive into that data today. Now this is all over on dcrainmaker.com, links below to the full deep dive. We'll have a look at the summary today. I'll flip up some stats here, but for the data geeks and the tri nerds, links below. Okay, let's get stuck straight into what we have. Given this is a swim, bike and run event, obviously it's an Ironman, and there's male and female, which we've split out. There's a lot of data here. Let me run through the summaries of what we have for the swim, bike and run. Overall activities we have from Strava. From the swim, we have 430 activities, which is around 17.8% of all participants. The bike, we have 581, which is almost a quarter of everybody who competed at Kona, uploading to Strava, good to see. And for the run, we have 436 activities, so 18.1% of total entries there. So that's the kind of numbers that we have. And I've been running some stats as athletes have been uploading during the week. We've grabbed this data and we've hit sort of stop, I guess, three days after the event. But in the days leading up to where we hit stop on the data, the averages remained very constant. So I'm pretty confident the data that we have here is a good representation of people who compete at Kona at the World Champs. Okay, right, onto the stats. The swim, what was the average swim pace? For the males, one minute 43 per 100 meters. For the females, one minute 59 per 100 meters. For the bike, this is an interesting one, power meter usage, the numbers of people uploading to Strava, not overall, not the bike count, it's a little bit different. We have 63.79% males uploading to Strava have power meters. And for females, very similar, 63.91. This differs a little bit from the actual bike count. Now that will be the official numbers that people actually have for the equipment counts, because again, this is Strava, it's a few things happening and there's a few things at play here, but it's still pretty good to have a look at what's going on. Average power. Back to the averages. The males, average power for the 180 kilometer ride, 185 watts. The females, 144. As such, the average speeds were a little different too. 33.39 or 20.75 miles per hour. Females, 29.57 and 18.37 miles per hour. So that's over a, well over four hours on the bike at that speed, good stuff. Heart rate monitor usage on the bike, we can check for that as well. 72% for the males and just under 60% for the females. Average heart rate for the males and females was both the same, 142 beats a minute. Didn't matter what speed, they're all going super hard. So for the run, now this is the marathon after they've done the swim and the bike. 42 kilometers of hot pavement pounding. The males, five minutes 35 per kilometer. The females, just over six minutes per kilometer. Heart rate monitor usage on the run, 75% female for the males and 62.5% for the females. Average heart rate for the run, this is the only place where we saw a bit of difference. The males, 142 beats a minute. The females, 141 beats a minute. Interesting observation that the heart rates for the bike and the run were very, very much the same. So over on dcrainmaker.com are all these graphs and more, but we'll just quickly run through them here. Here are the detailed swim pace for the males and females. Then we have the bike pace broken down into single kilometers per hour for the males and females. And then the run pace based on 10 second bins there. So over to where it all started for me, looking into this data from Strava about a year back or so. What GPS devices are in use? Well, for the swim, we have 430 activities there, of which 46.7% were the Garmin Forerunner 920 XT units, the multi-sport watch from Garmin. Coming in second place, the Garmin Forerunner 935, that unit there. Newcomer on the block somewhat, making up ground on the, uh, the old school 920 XT. Well, not quite old school, it still does the job. And then the Forerunner 735 coming in at third place there. Over to the bike event and the multi-sport watch was able to knock out the Garmin Edge for top place. Nearly a third of competitors using the 4920 XT there. And we had a total of 32 unique devices that we saw for the bike leg. And then onto the run data. Again, no surprises, 4920 XT takes the cake. Very similar to the swim there with the 935 coming in second place. So there's a quick overview of the 2017 Kona Ironman World Championships data. But there's extras. We've gone back and looked at 2012, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17, 
and have a look at where these stats lie when we start averaging things out. Now in the early days, 2012, 13 and 14, not a lot of people were uploading to Strava at that time. The more activities that get uploaded, the more accurate the data is. So let's go grain of salt for 12 through 14, but the subsequent years, quite interesting. Here we have the swim pace in seconds from 2012 to 2017. So we can see there 106, 104, 104, 106 seconds for the swim pace, pretty consistent. Over to the power meter usage on the bike, they track similarly to the actual physical bike count. So it's good to see. This year we saw a dip in power meter usage. I think it's because people haven't uploaded enough yet, but it tracked pretty closely. Over to the speeds for the last few years, we can see the speeds slowly creeping up. But when we look at the power comparison, it sort of hovers and this year dips down. My theory is people are focusing more on aerodynamics. It could also be the conditions as well. So interesting to see speed up this year, power down a little bit from last year. And finally onto the run pace from the Strava activities uploaded from 2012 through 17. 12 and 13 were very fast years, bit of a slowdown in 14 and 15, but 16 and 17 have become subsequently quicker. Again, not sure what's going on there. Could be conditions, could be better training, better pacing, but interesting to see. I'll be keen to see where they end up next year as well. So in summary there, device-wise, the Forerunner 920 XT takes the cake across the board, no question about it. If you're a triathlete, Ironman, it's pretty much the device you're gonna be using. In second place, the 935 is doing quite well, but I think there's room for someone else in the market to come along and bring out a good multi-sport watch and give Garmin a run for their money. They completely own the field at the moment. Anyhow, righty, thanks for watching. Again, the full breakdown and a lot more details over on dcrainmaker.com. So in the meantime, keep uploading to Strava and let us know what you think about the new redesign that came out this week. Comments below, thanks for watching.